dear students welcome to all of you to today's class first of all a very good morning to all of you but before starting the class as usual let's do brahmanath open your eyes so as you know today we are going to read a new chapter and this is an one act play named the unexpected written by ella atkins okay so dear students in the previous class we have read unit 1 of the chapter the unexpected which is written by ella atkins and here i had told you one thing and what's that these are the characters of this chapter okay mrs parker alice tom joe badger a convict and a warder okay but before it let me tell you one thing mrs parker was living alone her name is mrs parker and here alice and tom these are the two boys who used to frequent they visit mrs parker and joe badger is the boy of the same village whose uncle is in the police department and joe is also trying to do little bit investigation okay and one convict is there and another warder is also there so this one act play is evolving around these characters okay did you get a clear cut idea on it now listen here what happened mrs parker was single means she was living alone in a cottage quite isolated place he doesn't she doesn't receive any visitor but sometimes not sometimes most often this alice and tom they used to visit mrs parker and then one day alice and tom they came and they spoke to mrs parker that two convicts have been escaped from the jail so you should be a little bit conscious of it otherwise you might be in trouble okay this is being spoken by alice and tom in the meantime they are talking joe also came and he is asking a number of question to mrs parker why she was having the racing car etc etc then tom and alice they are there and mrs parker is speaking to them that i want to speak you something some secret of my life but for heaven's sake don't disclose it before anyone okay so this much was taught to you in the previous unit so now come to the next unit what is written mrs parker then listen somewhere in the prison a boy is suffering another is crying so this is section 2 paragraph number 53 then mrs parker is speaking somewhere in the prison there is an innocent boy and that innocent boy is suffering without any reason without any crime of his own who is speaking mrs parker is speaking maybe you heard of the felton forgery case and you must have heard about the felton forgery case and in that case an innocent boy is suffering there in the jail well roser felton is an innocent of that crime as either boys then mrs parker is speaking that another character came and who is he he is roger felton and mrs parker is speaking that roger felton is also another boy who is the victim of that crime but this boy is innocent like you too means according to mrs parker this roser felton felton is an innocent boy but without any fault of his he is in the prison and oh i have no time to go into details now but working in the same office with roger was a scoundrel who pretended to be his friend but the lady mrs parker is speaking right now i don't have the time to speak in detail but in the same office there was also another boy and that boy was working with this roser felton and that boy was a scoundrel and but he pretended to be a friend of roger and because of that scoundrel this roser felton had suffered incredibly this is being spoken by mrs parker okay this mean signed his employee's name to a check but he covered his tracks 
so cleverly that when the forgery was discovered, suspicion fell upon Roses. And that boy was very clever. He just signed a check, but he covered everything so beautifully, so intelligently that when the forgery came out, Roger was the victim. The chain of circumstantial evidence was very strong indeed, but at the same time, evidence was quite strong against this boy. Roger was known to be money, to be in money difficulties, and to have had unusual opportunities for passing a fourth check and at the same time Roser was having some financial crisis and everyone started believing that as he was in the financial crisis that's why he was there to pass the fourth check. Oh, I can't bear to remember the disgrace and horror, it, horror of it all and in the end Roser was convicted and sentenced to three years panel substitute. Servitude means what? It means uh, years of um, they will be in the prison and that will be physical, strong physical work that they have to do. Okay, means they will not only remain in the prison, in the meantime he has to do much more physical work. And after the trial everything was completed and Rosa was found guilty and he was being punished for three years of panel servitude. Alice, you speak as the you know, knew this boy. Then Alice is asking, you are speaking in such a manner that is if you know the boy. Mrs. Parker slowly, he is my son. My name is Mrs. Felton. Okay. So, here finally, Mrs. Parker is speaking that her real name is not Mrs. Parker. Her real name is Mrs. Felton. And this Rosal Felton is her son who is speaking. Mrs. Parker is speaking to Alice. Tom, what? You mean that that your son? And Tom was also surprised. What? That boy is your son? Mrs. Parker, oh my dear boys, I am trusting you as I have never trusted anyone else in my life. I had but one object when I took this cottage and that was to help Rosa to escape. Then the lady is speaking that throughout my life I have never ever trusted anyone as much as I trust you. And when I did take this cottage, the, my sole intention was to help Roger to escape from the jail. I have kept the car ready for use ever since I came here and this afternoon I am praying that my boy may be one of the escaped convicts and then says speaking that when I came here I just kept the car ready. Who is speaking? This lady, Mrs. Parker is speaking to Alice and Tom that when she came there, from that day onwards the car was ready and now she is praying that the convict who have escaped from the jail, one must be her son. And if he is, he knows where I am and he will come here, I have a suite of clothes ready for him and then, then the lady is speaking if he is the prisoner who has escaped from the jail then he knows where I am and I have kept everything ready so that he can run away from the place. Tom then he will escape in the Bentley without with great enthusiasm. Oh golly what a thrill. Then Tom is speaking it means the boy is going to take the racing car. Mrs. Parker ish but now you must go. Oh please and for pity's sake don't breathe a word of this to anyone. Then Mrs. Parker is speaking yes it's you. He's going to take the racing car. But for heaven's sake, don't speak a single word on it. Means she also requested the two boys not to disclose the secret. Otherwise, she will be in great problem. Alice. But Mrs. Parker, I mean, Mrs. Felton, can't we stay in help? We will do anything in our power if you will only let us stay. Then Alice is speaking, but can't we stay here? And can't we help you? If you permit us, then we are ready to help you. Think about these two boys, Alice and Tom, they are quietly eager, means definitely these two boys were having too much love and respect for Mrs. Parker. That's why they were also agree to carry, to face all the difficulties that Mrs. Parker, who is really Mrs. Felton, is going to face. Mrs. Parker, no, no, I can't let you do that. You don't realize what it would mean if you are caught helping me in this. You must go quickly. But Mrs. Parker, being a good lady, said tonight. And she said, no, 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 no. You should not be here. Because what I am going to do is quite illegal. And if 
you also will be caught in this case that definitely your condition will be worsen you will face lots of difficulties that's why you just leave the place don't be here then there was a knock on the door all is too late there's someone here now crushing left i'll open the door and then alice opens the door and someone entered enter convict who staggered quickly into the room then looks in alarm at the boys and mrs parker gaps and clutches the table as though about to faint then a convict entered mrs parker just hold the table as if she is going to faint and tom and alice they both are very happy because they thought that her son came tom catching hold of mrs parker to support quick get some water Mrs. Parker, no, no, I am all right. Miss was going to fall, but Tom hold her. Alice, don't be afraid of us, fellows. Your mother has told us your story, and for sake, we will do everything in our power to help you to escape. Listen, here the convict has spoken nothing. The mother has spoken nothing, but this boy, Alice, is speaking lots of things. And what is he speaking? He is speaking to the convict that you just don't worry, of watch. your mother has told us everything and we are here to help you okay think on the situation it is not look two convicts have been escaped from the jail it is not sure the convict who came now either see either he is the son of mrs parker or not but here alice is speaking all these things to him convict crushing and taking her hand he, the convict he just crossed and took the hand of mrs parker mother please don't give up now they are up to me and there's no time to lose if i am to get away for pity's sake don't lose your nerve now i must talk to you about our plans for afterwards then the convict is going near mrs parker and speaking that mother please don't give up right now they are just following me just save me and don't i must talk to you our our plans afterwards mrs parker my boy i'm sorry the strain has to be the strain has been so terrible come quickly you must change at once then mrs park we okay beta i'm sorry and just come quickly and have a change means come on change the race then they both le- left the place they went to another room alice flinging himself in armchair then alice just threw himself in the armchair well of an extraordinary adventure who on earth thought we should be mixed up in a thrill like this and alice is speaking an extraordinary adventure who would have thought that we are going to do this type of work tom leaning on left side of table fancy mrs parker having the nerve to plan all this and then almost fainting at, at the last minute a oh, well as my dad says where women are concerned the unexpected always happens then tom is speaking that mrs parker is able to plan all these things she can do all this work and then again he is speaking that ha huh, my father is to speak that where women are present everything can happen okay and alice that poor fellow will need a mighty lot of luck even now if he is to get away all the roads are sure to be worse than alice is speaking but the person the convict has to be careful because the complete road will be worse tom it must be a nerve wracking job to escape from prison you never know from one moment to the next when someone is going to pounce on you pounce means what sudden attack sudden jump over someone somebody else so here alice is also speaking the same thing tom is speaking not alice tom is speaking ha huh? you must be extra careful because at any moment anyone can jump on you to hold you then again there is the knock on the door and tom and alice they just looked at each other alice it sounds as though someone has found it then alice is speaking ha huh, someone has jumped right now tom here wait a bit don't go to the door it may be a warder from the prison someone is almost sure to come here to make inquiries then tom is speaking don't go near the door it must be a warder from the jail and someone may come here in order to do an inquiry alice all the same i must open the door delay will only make things look suspicious if it's a warder we'll have to throw him off the scent somehow mrs for mrs parker's sake then alice is speaking no problem even when the warder is there we have to open the door because if we do the delay then definitely it will create more and more doubt in the mind of that person so for mrs parker's sake 
for that lady we can do anything and everything so we have to save her at the same time we must try to dissuade everyone from entering to the house in the meantime they both are talking that at any cost they are going to save the lady okay so in this class we have read up to paragraph number 74 in the next class we are going to complete it understood so what is the theme up to this much the theme is a convict came first the lady confessed that Roger Felton who is in the jail and he is being convicted of a forgery case and he is being given three years of punishment three years of imprisonment with hard physical labor but he is the innocent one and the scoundrel was there in the office he did all these things and the means uh, when it was means investigation was being done everyone found that Roger is the guilty one but Mrs. Parker's real name is not Mrs. Parker's is Mrs. Felton and she is here in order to help her son to escape from the jail and right now when they are talking on all these things there was a knock there was a bang on the door and when they opened suddenly a convict entered into the house then these two boys Alice and Tom they are also speaking that your mother has told us everything etc etc then in the meantime Mrs. Parker was also ready to help that convict but either the convict is your son or not it is not mentioned but the lady was also talking with the convict and the convict was also calling the lady as mother understood it you just watch the video read the text if you have any problem any doubt you just ask me okay so till that time thank you have a nice time